Well, supply chain is crucial. If without a supply chain, we're not going to deliver anything. And so the people and the, and the companies within that supply chain are going to be crucial to actually delivering the 70 gigawatts. And there's a number of things that the, the group is looking at to make sure that that supply chain works efficiently, effectively, and seamlessly. So we're looking at uh, how payments flow throughout the supply chain. We're looking at the contractual relationships for players within that supply chain to make sure that, um, that people know what they're contracting to and that there's no unexpected or un unanticipated risk that they're taking on board. We're looking at, uh, at making sure that the payments then flow through that supply chain quite quickly because one of the things which, in my experience in construction, can frustrate effective working together and collaboration is a, is a lack of payment and payment being stalled through the supply chain for whatever reason it happens to be. And so it's important to me that we try and get the, the, the flow of cash through that supply chain to make it uh, if, as effective as possible. So if that's looking at you know, the, taking the skills out of the supply chain group, we're looking at how that, that works effectively as a, as a cohesive sort of chain of value add to make sure that works. We're then looking at how we can bring innovation. So it's a, the great thing about solar for me is it's constantly evolving. We're constantly getting better products and better ways of doing things, uh, better ways of monitoring, better ways of maintaining and looking after solar. And so we need to make sure that we can get that, um, those innovations through the supply chain and funded by the funders so they know what they're buying uh, as fast as we possibly can. Because if we get those innovations through, it's gonna be easier to deliver the 70 gigawatts. Uh, and then the last thing we're looking at is how we can onboard and onshore some of that manufacturing capacity to make sure that we're building stuff and making stuff here in the UK or perhaps closer than China. So that's, that's, that's the supply chain group. It's got a lot on its plate, uh, but it's, it's, it's getting some great work done. Yeah, I, I mean, I've, I've really enjoyed being on the Solar Task Force. I mean, it, there's some passionate people who are there to, to to really get the best out of our sector. And we realize that failure is not an option. We simply have to get 70 gigawatts deployed by 2035, otherwise we're gonna to struggle to meet net zero. It's, it's very binary. And so having the opportunity to influence and support and help and guide the industry through this challenge, it, it has been really, you know, it's been quite humbling and, and fascinating at the same time. So, it's, the, the task force finishes in spring next year. We produce a report uh, on a route map on all the things that we think are going to have to happen to be able to enable the 70 gigawatts to happen. Um, and I think it's a, it's a really good model for the renewable sector. You know, we've, got the, we've got a really great cross-section of expertise across the industry, identifying where the blockages are, or identifying where the opportunities are, and I think that is a, it's a great model for the rest of the sector to follow to be able to enable renewables to take off in what is it's going to have to happen. You know, if we're going to achieve net zero, then renewables are going to have to take off. So yeah, I, I'd say watch this space. Spring next year, great report coming out. And at that point, the hard work for everybody else begins. Mm -hmm.